this is a replay. But to be able to watch the finest vintage racing in America live, download the app or scan the QR code and subscribe. Available on both Android and iOS, this is the only place to watch the 2021 season of SVRA live with over 10 hours of coverage each and every weekend. Our unique live stream coverage will bring you all the action from each group as well as live timing results and news from the biggest collection of vintage racers in the USA. Subscriptions for the race weekend are just $9.99 per weekend or $59.99 for the season. To subscribe, download the SBRA app or scan the QR code now and be part of the future of American vintage racing with SBRA. Welcome back. We look high above the mid-Ohio circuit. Sorry, just chatting away with my new guests for the next race. I am delighted to say we've got two cracking guests for our following race in F4 because they've been there, done that, and got the T-shirt, and they are racing currently in FR. They've got another race to go, so we're trying to warm them up a little bit. It's Jacob Abel, who's come back this weekend, and I will find out why in a minute, and Jordan Missig, who I'm delighted to be joined with. And again... Uh, because we've got two drivers, and I want you to uh, feel free to see what you see. You see so much more than any commentary, and I've know, I know I've worked with you before, J um, Jacob. You know so much about um, these cars when you're watching it on TV, and I know you watch it eagle-eyed. Uh, you've had a great weekend. Um, but who in this F4 setup, either one of you can answer this question, do you see as being the next big guys coming through? Jordan, you've probably taken a closer look because Jacob's moved on to the road to India, and we'll talk about that in a moment, too. We've seen come from F4 have made impacts in FR, and we've seen that so far, so far this year. Um, but a couple of guys that I think who are going to be really good in this race are both Matt Clark, Noel Leon, and Jason Alder, three of the top guys who are not only fighting for the championship, but who are really competitive and they showed st strengths here in race two earlier today. And I think they're gonna be on top of their game when they come to race three here in just a moment. And Jacob, this is an easy question for you. I'll get with some harder ones later. How important has this F3, F4, and now Road to Indy been for your career and in terms of advancing and getting your skill levels? I know you, uh, your, your father runs the team as well and you, you have a lot of other drivers, but how important is it for these youngsters to go through these categories? Yeah, you know, it's been everything for me personally. Um, I had a pretty pretty shortened karting career there. Uh, very accelerated, was was at the top level pretty quickly, um, but for not that long. So to be honest, I learned most um, in these categories like F4, uh, F3, now Formula Regional Americas. Um, and that's really taught me pretty much everything I know about racing. I'm a, I did my first F4 race back in 2017. Um, and I've been basically in the SCCA Pro Racing paddock ever since. So. You know, forever, forever in debt to, to everyone over here for, for everything that they've done for me in my career. Um, and I think everyone has kind of seen me grow up in, in this series um, and in this, in this sort of ladder. And what you don't see when we're watching the racing like this as they come out of the pits is those are guys behind the scenes like the Scott Goodyears and the Brian Tills uh, and the brilliant SCCCA, SCCA, it's only two, SCCA uh, staff that put this together and effectively control and manage and teach these youngsters what to do right, what to do wrong, and, and you can't get a better guy that's got Goodyear. Yeah, 100%. I mean, there's so much experience, like you said, with, with Brian Till, Scott Goodyear, um, tons of experience in those guys, and, and they aren't even your coaches. Uh, usually you'll have a coach on top of that or engineers that have a lot of experience as well, but to have these guys kind of overall looking over you is, is really, really good. and. And, you know, I think all the drivers have a lot of respect for, for Scott Goodyear and, and Brian Till and, and the likes of, likes of them uh, as, as they know that they've been in their shoes before. Now, you boys got another race. Uh, Jordan, I know you've had some bad luck this weekend. Let's get that out of the way. What happened? Yeah, no, it was uh, going through turn 11. I had another driver just right in front of me spin yeah. out, and I just, I just had nowhere to go. Yep. You know, it's plain and simple, nowhere to go, just wrong place, wrong time, and unfortunately just clipped the left rear of our car and I couldn't move anywhere so that was my race done and a fortunate circumstance for us because that was some good points right there that I was going to be able to gain out of that and potentially some more extra spots but the unfortunate part of that is now that the guys at the Milwaukee Racing have just got the car all fixed up so we're going to be ready to go for race three here later this afternoon but you know race three of each weekend I've been we've been a part of these triple header weekends and normally race three is when the gloves come off you 
basically going for broke here at this mm -hmm. last race of the weekend because now you know you got time to go back, debrief, and get ready for the next race. Well, and, and I know you're going to be going for broke because Tavella also had problems. Chotsky didn't have a good race either. So even though Simpson and Carr have had relatively good results and respect, you can still get back in there and finish this weekend on a high as you, as you head to the next round. Yeah, no, as of right now, I'm still sitting in third in the championship, but that's only like a three-point lead, so it's still – anybody's up for grabs for, and, uh, for third in the championship. So, I mean, we still got to go um, go for broke here and try to get as many points as we possibly can as we head to race three. And, Jacob, you're moonlighting. You're doing a bit of practice. You've done this championship uh, and has great success. But you're now on the road to Indy Pro 2000. Um, but you're coming here, right? Yeah, so we're racing here next year in the Indy Pro 2000 series, um, and we've been racing that primarily all year this year. Um, but, you know, my heart's always been with SCCA Pro Racing, like I but said. But you're coming to Mid-Ohio is what I meant. Yeah. So you're getting a bit of practice. Yep, yeah, exactly, exactly. So always always good to be back in the SCC, SCCA Pro Racing paddock. Um, always delighted to have you. Yep. So, more importantly, who's going to win this race? I know you don't know these guys very well, but Hunter Yaney, Kiffian Simpson, there's a, uh, not Kiffian Simpson, um, uh, I'm trying to think now. Well, obviously, I'm, I'm going to your race now, but in this race, Noel Leon obviously is going to be favorite. Jason Oldler, that's who I'm looking at to try and, like you say, do that race three mm -hmm. all out because he had bad luck in race one. He was there in race two, uh, and now he's right there with Noel, Noel Leon for the th uh, third race of the weekend. And it's so far been a Mexican wave, quite literally, for the number 19 because the man from Monterey has dominated. But can anybody stop him, I wonder? What's the key to a good first lap here, Jason? Uh, Jacob. Oh, yeah, you know, I mean, we'll see here on the start. Obviously, getting a, a good start, jump off the line here is, is crucial. Um, headed down into turn one, and then and then getting a good line into the keyhole is going to be absolutely crucial. Away they go, then, and a good start by the leaders. Good, clean start around the outside, but now tucking in. Jason Alder in the VRD, gray and green. Slots into, what, fourth place, fifth place? Good start also from Matt Clark, right there. It's nip and tuck going into the keyhole for the first time. And guys, take it away as we go down this back straight. What's the key when you're in a gaggle like this, when you're really wheel to wheel to try and give yourself some space? Well, one thing I want to point out was it was a good opportunity by Noel Leon and Jason Alder trying to rail the outside as much as they can on this opening lap when everyone's so compact together. But here going into turn four, everyone's so congested, it's just picking the right, right, right line as you head into the corner. I think you're absolutely right. Gutierrez it is who leads for a moment, but then into the lead goes the number 26, of Mac Clark. Now, we keep talking about turn four and the keyhole has been the obvious overtakes. Do you boys know any other secret overtakes? Yeah, one of my personal favorite ones, um, it's a little bit sneaky, is down into the carousel. You can okay. kind of get back to gas a little bit sooner and and sneak it down on the inside of someone they usually won't be expecting it there. So that's definitely a one that you can that you can pull off. You kind of see a lot of the NASCAR guys when they do it here when they come to Mid Ohio. You'll see them just kind of release the brake a little bit, try to roll a little bit more speed in the middle of the corner, just to kind of stick their nose in there to get the guy alongside them to say, "Hey, we're here and we're coming through." Yeah, interesting. Adam Andretti uh, was in here earlier and he was doing a great job in TA2, and he was saying that if you stick your nose on the outside at four and you can hold on, you can keep your, your foot going and get through on five, and he proved it, and so too did Dyson after he was told that by Adam Andretti, so we saw it in glorious Technicolor today. Great racing so far, already jostling for position. Here's Alder Good against move. the number six. Good move here by Bajoy Guard here, yep. just to roll the outside and, and carry the minimal speed up so he gets a better acceleration down the straightaway here, and let's see if Alder can come back and go into four. How different, Jacob, are the downforce between F4 and F4? It's quite dramatic, right? So how much do you, you do get some drag or you do get some slipstreaming, but not as much? Yeah, it's pretty aggressive here. Um, you know, I, honestly, in F4, you can, you can actually pass a lot easier um, because they don't have as, as big of wings causing as much turbulence as the, the Formula Regional cars do. So it teaches you a little bit more racecraft as it's a little bit easier to pass, and it's also a little bit easier to be passed as well, though. So you got to be... Got to be on it um, and defending and, and things like that as well. Now, if you're new to F4 Americas, this is the single-seater championship. Effectively, if you've been karting or you're looking to make a career as a teenager and you're kind of thinking, well, how do I start here? Well, most people start in karting. Um, that's the usual way. That's how you get up to speed. That's how you lose the fear factor. 
but then it gets technical. We start to get slicks and wings, and you start to move up to F4. And most of the kids we're looking at now, all hopeful for either Formula One or IndyCar, and many with the talent to do so. Noel Leon of Monterrey, Mexico, definitely one of those guys, and following in a footsteps of several Mexican drivers now, right at the top of the field. And uh, I think there's some big stars in the making here. What, thing, have, you, what have you spotted? I think there was a bit, little bit of an accident there in turn oh, okay. one. Oh, well big done. Oh, data class. <laughs> More than just a bit. Yeah, somebody went wide at turn one, but we're looking as to where he's ended up. Uh, but I think it was just a, a case of going into the dust and dirt because as our camera one picks up down the main straight, we go diving into turn four again, and Noel Leon does it. Into second place he goes. We do have a car off just at our, outside of our commentary box window over in the carousel there. Good so point. <laughs> there is someone over there, so yellow flags will probably be leaving over there. But what I wanted to point out, what's interesting is that, oh, yeah. oh, there's a car there. Oh. I think that's the 32. That's Trevor Russell. Just batted into the wall there at the end. Exit of one. So that's the dust that Jacob was that's talking exactly about. That's exactly it. So he's come across the, the track. A and that's busy, very easy to do because what happens is you have so much wheel binded up in the car, and it's such a high-speed corner as turn one. And if you put two wheels off there and you have so much wheel in the car, yeah. the car just lets go, and you're just holding out for the ride. Interesting because that turn one at Mid-Ohio has been – I've seen it in Indy. I've seen it in IMSA. I've seen it so many times. You know, it kind of forces you to go faster than you really should. And once you're out there, there's nowhere to go, right? <laughs> so we'll go past that incident. But that's what all the deaths was. And you can see the marshals flagging heavily to, to let them know that there's a car strewn on the track. And that slows everything down. Now, boys, take it away. I've, I've been very intrigued. I've had a few drivers. Nick Person's been in here, Jason Older. But talk a little bit about the procedures that you go through. Jordan, why don't you pick it up and, and tell me what you do under safety like this? You know that the car's going to be picked up. And you know that you're basically going to have one, maybe two. You've seen the accident. You've seen the incident. You can kind of judge also that it's not going to take too long, but it could be longer than you want. What do you do? Well, one thing I try to do is like I try to kind of get – we were through the first couple laps of the race. All the pre-race jitters are all gone and everything. So now it's just trying to calm yourself down after you've gone through all the chaos. Um, but, but right now it's just about keeping heat in the tires, trying to clean your tires off and everything. And the one thing I've noticed so far only three laps into this race is that it's very hot out, and I'm seeing a lot of cars sliding through some of the corners. So it's just kind of seeing what – adjust what your competitors are doing and then kind of translate to what your car has been able to do and then focus on those points on what you can do for your strengths and weaknesses as we get ready to go back to green. I always think it's hard for the leader, Jacob, to be behind a, a production car because obviously they, they, they just don't have anywhere near the torque and power and, and it's almost frustrating to try to stay behind him. Yeah, exactly. So we had a caution late in our race um, earlier today and, and I was in that same position. So honestly, leading is is a little bit difficult under caution um, because you know you're, the, the pace car goes the same pace the whole entire time where you know, if you're more back in the pack, there's a lot of speeding up and slowing down that actually allows you to, to clean off the tires and keep a little bit of heat. So that's, I mean, that's the main thing. Um, we've had a bunch of different cars running this weekend, so there's going to be a lot of different types of rubber all over the track. Um, so just keeping that, that unwanted rubber off of your tires and, and keeping yeah. them clean for, for when we go green is going to be... And how do you do crucial. that? I mean, obviously you stay on the, well, on the race line as much as possible, but how do you avoid picking up rubber? Yeah, you know, some of it's a little bit inev inevitable, sure. um, but, you know, to get it back off your tires, is you'll see a lot of the drivers doing a, a lot of weaving, um, using a lot of brake, uh, just to kind of maintain as much heat in the tires as possible, as, as that's going to be everything as soon as they go green. And do you mentally go through your roller decks of the guy behind you, in your case, Josh Carr, going, nah, is he a good restarter? Or <laughs> Yeah, you know, you try not to think too much about that, um, but, you know, you might think, Think back in the race and, and think where they might be quicker than you um, and where you might be quicker to, to see where you, you might have to defend or, or things like that because obviously it packs up the field a ton. Um, so just, just keeping an eye on that is, is also a big deal. You're listening to Jacob Abel and Jordan Missick, and I'm sorry, Mum, that I've got his name right, wrong before now, and I won't try to do it again. I know I'm in trouble, and I will pay my, my price, I promise. Mum's a tough, tough lady to keep. She's very tough. Yeah. Very tough. Oh, I, don't worry. <laughs> Colin Braun, Colin Brown, had that one too. Met his mum. Hello. She said, can I take you aside? Yes. Got it. Yeah, you got to be on the right side <laughs> of that one. Otherwise, <laughs> you're going to be in a bad place in mind. That Mums one. are your biggest fans. Oh, yeah. They don't always like your racing, maybe. But <laughs> once they know you're going to do it, and you're just going to do it. Exactly. They're that's, behind you. That's one thing my mum 
tries to avoid coming to most of my races. Tell us a little bit about your setup because I'm always intrigued because Able Racing is a big enterprise these days. Yeah, so we have, it's actually turned into a, a pretty big program. Um, we started in, in F4 racing back in 2017. Uh, we just thought it was a little bit more financially doable to, to purchase the car and do it ourselves. Um, then, you know, taking just a check to go to a, a big team that already has experience. Um, it takes a little well, bit. That's of, tough too. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it takes a little bit because we don't get the, the database of setups and things like that that some of the other bigger teams have. Um, but, you know, it's been it's been really cool. We've developed a really strong program here, I think. Um, and then this weekend, especially with the, the help of Newman Walks Racing, uh, they've really taken us in with open arms to, to help us do this one off race. And it was really good to help help them get their first win in, in FR Americas earlier today. And Newman Wax, uh, that is the original Paul Newman team, right? Yeah, it is. So Brian Hallahan running that program, uh, really, really strong program. I actually did a race with them back in 2017 in a different series. Um, so I've always sort of known them uh, growing up around the track and, and through my career. So really, really big hats off for them. They have a, have a really good program over there. You put on a show today, a second and a first, or this weekend. Um, how's the season going, though? Yeah, you know, it's going well. Uh, it started off a little bit dry. We had a bunch of changes in, in our team internally. Um, so it was a little bit, took a little bit um, with growing pains and things like that. Just everyone trying to communicate the best we could. But, you know, I think we're in a, we're in a really good place right now that we have a bunch of momentum. Uh, and it good. should be good moving forward. Well, we're keeping a close eye on Ernie Francis Jr. He's had an up and down weekend for sure. He's been a busy boy. I don't know if you've been following his progress, but... Uh, he was on CBS last night doing the SRX with Tony Stewart and the rest of the boys, Elio Castro Nevers. That was a quite fun thing to see. Tony Kennard, Elio, and all the rest of it. And now he's done two races today, almost got a podium in TA before breaking down. And here he is, again, in the very next race, uh, you know, uh, coming up against you guys uh, in about, what, an hour's time. So the boy's busy. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> really good stuff. And, and I'll tell you what, have you been impressed how quickly he's... Uh, Take it to the car because he's not a single-seater guy. No, this weekend he's really kind of shown his stuff. Um, quite honestly, you know, he's kind of slowly developed into the program, which you know, as a new driver into the program, you're going to see that. But he's taking it quickly. Uh, me and Jacob actually this early this week got a really close glimpse of him, um, him being in front of us in race one. But here we go. We're going back to green. We are. We're going back to green, and away we go. And Matt Clark leads the way. He's got Noel Leon looking for the triple here in second place then behind him jason older is right there too here's the number five good start from matt christiansen everybody cleanly through turn one that was where one of the incidents of two took place here we go side by side into the keyhole now leon likes that wide line and he likes to take that wide line to get good drive and you can do that here and he's going to try to use it to get a slipstream here and try to go for an overtake at four. Matt Clark defending here on the inside as Leon is trying to look to the outside here. Going to have to kind of outbreak him here. Here we go. Under braking. Matt Clark wise to it. Good racing. Just behind. Ooh, you want to be that's as close as you want to be. Yeah, you want to be careful there not to get your nose in there. Otherwise, the drivers will tend to push you off there because they don't know you're there on your side. Good point. High above then. Look how close it is. You could throw a blanket over the top, what, 12? And then we've got another big gaggle behind that. And uh, really good close racing. But that's what a safety car will do. And we love it. Just bring the whole field back together and puts everybody back into contention. It's kind of how like our, one of our FR races was early this morning. Like two yeah. or three laps after the green was flying, was flying, we were just all single file on a huge train. Jason Older under pressure as well. But a good restart also by the number six of Garg. There's Bowlesby. You probably raced against him. Yeah, I think I have Hayden has definitely definitely come a long way. Uh, uh, it's Jason Alder pulling off the pace there on the inside. Yep. Um. Yeah, uh, and I'm sure you've raced. I'm sure you've raced against some of these guys too. Yeah, no, they, some of these guys uh, I've been able to ra fortunate enough to race against. Um, some of these guys, they have shown really good pace and really good promise to move up. Oh, huge crash. Oh, big crash. And involving the number one car and two others. Oscar Haffer, the 
new boy. And a, a rear wing gone. And we'll probably see why that happened. But uh, we sort of kind of saw the end of that one. Uh, but um, let's hope they all keep going. Because if they do, we won't need another safety. But uh, there might be some debris on track which needs to be cleared up. But either way, drama as always here in the F4 America's Championship. That yeah, was taking place right at the exit of the keyhole there. So a really good passing opportunity for some of these guys. But maybe getting a little bit too aggressive. Chris Tadulu back on track. I don't think he did the, the race this morning. I'm not sure what happened, but uh, didn't see him out there. And, of course, he's one of the championship contenders, the Canadian. So Oscar Haffer involved. Was it? I don't think Jake Vanilla was in that incident. I think Joseph Daniel may have been and Arturo Flores, but we'll see. Racing continues at the front. Matt Clark doing the business for Canada. Mexico is number 19. Noel Leon looking for his third win of the weekend and a chance to really put the muckers on this championship and get them the advantage he wants. Yeah, you know, back to Nico Christodoulou. He's had a really, really strong drive. I think he started very, very, very far back in the field. So he's all the way up to, to I believe, 12th now. So really strong run by him trying to, you know, salvage as many points possible for his, his championship aspirations. Yeah, no question about it. Now, Rodrigo Gutierrez is in third place at the moment. There he is. Now, we do have a full course caution coming out, and that will change the race again. Now, with 10 minutes to go, it's a different uh, it's a different scenario, isn't it? Because you're effectively now looking at a big sprint race. Uh, you're going to be, what, eight minutes? Maybe, probably more like five, six minutes. So what's that, two, maybe three laps? You've got to kind of think on those terms now. And as you said, Jordan, rightly at the beginning, this is that third race where everybody's going for glory. So now it kind of ups the, ups the pressure again, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, at this point, you know, the team managers of the guys on the pit wall are telling you how much time is left in the race. So they're saying that right now there's probably nine minutes left. When we get closer, going back to green, we're maybe looking at like around, like you said, five to six minutes left. And as a driver, you're kind of just gauging lap times around this. So us in the FR cars, we're doing about minute 19, minute 20 lap times. So we're thinking, well, if there's five to six minutes left and we're doing around minute to 20 lap times, there's going to be only like three laps to go in this case, in this case in point. So at that moment, you're thinking you've only got three laps to make as many moves as possible or to try to get up to the front as close as you can. Jake Manila was involved in that incident. I just saw him pull off uh, without the rear of the car. So, yeah, sadly, the number two, Jake Manila of San Antonio, Texas, out of this race. He was in the booth earlier. Uh, really looking forward to this race, sadly. Out goes Alder. I don't know what the problem was there for Jason, but he's out for VRD, and it looks as though the car's in, in fine fettle, but there must have been something, because you don't need a pit stop. I don't know. Did you work out what that might have been? Could have been anything, couldn't it? I, I, what I thought of was it could have been let, like a flat left rear or something like that. I don't know. Um, normally, you don't pit for like, yeah. oh, unless it was wing damage or like a flat tire that you have normally. So that's only, like, the only two reasons you would really pit. Yeah, exactly. Especially because it looks like it was somewhat of a quick fix there. Um, they popped the engine cover off. Um, so we'll see if that might have had something to do with it. But good news is he's, he's back out. He might be a lap down, but... You know, this experience in, in the F4 is super invaluable, so all the laps you can get um, will be super helpful. i tell you what, it's going to get pressure put on Matt Clark right now. He's yet to win a race this season, and this would change his year. He's been in contention throughout most of the season, uh, but if he could pick up a win here in this third race, this is going to change his second half of the season dramatically and put him right in contention. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're coming down here um, probably about to the halfway point in the season. Um, so this is where the championship is really going to start to establish itself. Um, it's super, super crucial to get those consistent finishes, uh, wins when you can get them, uh, as this FIA point system really, really favors wins. I think it's seven more points um, than finishing second. So so really good. They'll definitely be, definitely be looking to do their best here. And in the rear, we see for the first time, because we've got our drone up, Clear Fork Reservoir, giving the water to the residents of Lexington, Mansfield, and the nearby. I like a little trivia now and again. <laughs> yeah, the amount I of times. I bet you wonder where I get this stuff. Yeah, sure. I mean, the amount of times I've been to this you track never knew, and you never, never, that. never have realized that that's that close. Well, so. I, I got that from the Isle of Man, I'll have you know. So, uh, which is by the by. But anyway, that's <laughs> why I got that information. So, here you go. 
I know. It's the first time I drove in this morning and saw it for the first time and went, I didn't know there was a lake here. And mm. then I saw it on the drone and went, there is a lake here. Yeah. We are in the middle of the countryside in Mid-Ohio. It's a beautiful part of the country, uh, but not a lot around. And uh, that reservoir, I saw people fishing there this morning, looking rather nice indeed. But as you say, when you come here on the, on the land, so to speak, you wouldn't know it was there. So we're going to have a great finish to this one because... We've got two guys desperate for a win. One wants a triple, the other wants his first. And just as hungry, I would have thought. But a delighted Noel Leon last time out. He really did race well in that second race this morning. And if he can finish it off, somebody else coming into the pits that as looks, well. Looks like maybe the number one again, or the number two. Yep. I do want to give a quick uh, props out to Rodrigo Gutierrez. Yep. Earlier this week, he started, I want to say, I saw on social media, he started like 22nd, way back in the field, and drove all the way up to 11th earlier this morning and put in the fastest lap, is now running, starting on pole for this race, and is now running in a third spot throughout the whole entire race. So, proven that if you put in the fastest lap and you can start off yep. front, you get yourself good track position. Well, Oscar Happer, it is the number one. You were quite rightly pointing that out. They're putting a new nose cone because he's got damage to the front wing on the right hand side. Uh, he and Vanilla involved in that incident, and I'm going to say that Haffer, Vanilla, and maybe Joseph Danielle uh, involved in that three-car incident that has caused this full-course yellow. Five minutes to go, and the clock ticking down for the 26th, the white, red, and blue of Matt Clark, the young Canadian who has high hopes following in the footsteps of so many great Canadians that have been to America. Saw Paul Tracy in action last night in SRX. That's a few years back. And of course, Lance Stroll doing the business in Formula One at the moment, but there's plenty more in between. Canada has produced some great racing drivers over the years. And of course, the Montreal Formula One Grand Prix, still one of the best, sadly postponed because of COVID last year and this year. Worth repairing and worth getting back out there, right, guys? Because uh, every, every lap you've got, um, you know, it's it's more experience and more chance to. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and and especially as these drivers being so so young in their careers, um, yeah. this could be the first time they've ever been to Mid Ohio. So, you know, seeing what the track does in in hot conditions and in different things like that would definitely definitely uh, go a long ways and and help them in their their future races here. Track experience and track knowledge is everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was here a few weeks ago watching some guys that have followed, you know, who, who are, have done exactly what you guys have done. And I'm thinking to go to Dickinson and uh, Kyle Kirkwood racing in IMSA. And I'm sure their days at, uh, you know, mid Ohio in the past have put them in good stock for coming here and racing in one of the most intense races I've seen and a very, very professional field, as you can imagine. And they're learning their way, but they're holding their own too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kyle in particular, you know, he's, yeah. he's always taken to this track really well, and, and they come here next weekend in Indy Lights, so definitely expect to, to see some good things out of them. Yeah, the road to Indy couldn't be stronger at the moment, and uh, really excited uh, to see just exactly what they're doing in both US 2000, Pro 2000, and Indy Lights. Away we go then, and Matt Clark's got it all to do. He's got the championship leader right behind him. Dives into turn one. He's got to keep his metal now. Got to keep his head and keep calm. But he's been that way most of the weekend. There's no reason to think he won't stay calm. But uh, that said, and this is where Leon likes to go out on the outside. He's done it before, and he might try it again now. Three minutes to go. Ooh, three wide. Whoa, that doesn't go, does it? That's tight. It is tight, but they made it somehow. Now four of them glued together. And now this is the next overtake opportunity coming into four. Through the kick they go, flat out here, and then heavy braking, and Matt Clark needs to break as late as he dare, but still get round the corner. Leon trying to go high and wide, but he's not gonna make it round this time, and if he's not careful, he could get an overtake by the 71. Good racing. Barg in there as well. Enjoy Barg in that number, all black number six. Yeah, you know, good luck there by Noel Leon. Um, you can definitely make that outside pass there work in turn four. Yeah. Um, but you got to be careful, especially this late in the weekend. Um, like I was talking about earlier, with all that excess rubber out there, it can get really, really slippery. So 
So we'll see if he'll try it again here. Yeah, and the stewards wouldn't complain if you closed the door there because it is a natural line to come across to the next corner, which is a left-hander, right? Sure, sure. So we're getting down to the nitty-gritty. The final race of the weekend, and as Jordan pointed out, uh, this is where it gets not desperate, but it's where everybody's going to push harder, perhaps, take more risks than before, nothing to lose, and really give it some, finish your weekend on a high. Psychologically, more than anything else, it's an important thing. Chase Gardner, I haven't seen much of him this weekend, another youngster coming through, but uh, a lot of people talking about him uh, and say he's got what it takes, but he's right up on this front group now. Yeah, we'll see what he's able to do here. Um, really, really impressive young Carter chases. So we'll see if he can carry some of that experience into, into the F4 series. Yeah, for both of you, how hard is it to make that transition from karting to this sort of racing, uh, flicks and wings? Do you, you know, you know, karting definitely teaches you a lot uh, in the way of of racecraft and, and various things like that. As we have a pass here potentially for a second. Yeah, almost. But yeah, like I was saying, it, it teaches you a lot of racecraft. So in these closing stages, um, a lot of these guys will be will be relying on that karting experience um, when battling for position here to try and try and finish out the race. And that's kind of like what the F4 series is. It's kind of most almost like a karting race. Everyone's just so close together, and the amount of drafting you're doing in this series is very similar to what you're doing in karting. So a lot of guys who try to apply the racecraft that they do in karting try to apply it to here in F4. And then you use what they learn here with car control and everything, and apply that to the next uh, step of the ladder when they get up to FR. Rodrigo Gutierrez trying everything in the book to get up further than third place. But we're coming down to the closing stages now. Good racing. Another young Canadian in the number 36. That's Justin Arsenault having a good weekend too. But he's not in this lead group. Here's that second group. He's in the middle of it. Just behind him, the 22 of Nico Cust uh, Cristadillo. And you're right, he has done a good job to get all the way through, hasn't he? Yeah, really impressive. You know, as we come to the final lap here, he's going to be trying to get as many points as possible. I mean, championships are sometimes decided by just one or two points. So Yeah, it's so what it you do in the bad races that sometimes counts more. Exactly, exactly. Good run here by Noel. Let's see if he can use this momentum that he's generating here to make a desperate move on the last lap. Well, if he doesn't do it here, where can he try and overtake? The only last place that I think is what Jacob was attesting to, maybe going into the carousel or even on the exit of nine here going through Thunder Valley. Good point. All right. We're joined by Jordan Missing and, of course, Jacob Abel, who are out in action very soon after this race. There's an enduro race to come. Oh, and a spinner there. Car three, that's Chase Highland. Be careful being back on. <laughs> well, he's back out. Somehow, has he stopped it? This is at the keyhole. Yeah, it's at the entry of the keyhole yeah. there. But he stalled it. But to be fair, final lap. Oh, he's all right. He's okay. Won't affect anything at the front. Matt Clark on his way to what his, will be his first victory here in F4 Americas. First season in the series. Here he comes to the line and will take the checkered flag ahead of the championship leader. Well done to him. Canada wins. Mexico second. And... Great race also for Rodrigo Gutierrez in third. So it's been a really, really good race despite those uh, safety cars. Yeah, really, really mature driving there by Matt Clark to be able to, to keep it together there under the pressure. Uh, Noel Leon was was trying to force him into a mistake, but, but Matt did a really, really good job to, to come home with the win there. Really good defensive driving on having to defend those big runs from Noel and even attacks too going into the braking zone of turn four and even in the keyhole two very high quality percentage chances to get an overtake done there and Matt Clark did a very nice job of keeping his nose clean and keeping himself out in front. And guys, you know you're in an international field when it's Canada, Mexico and Bolivia as your top three. Yeah, that's that's crazy <laughs> for sure. And that just shows you how strong the Amer I, I'm glad because everybody could say, well, we want the Americans to be out there in front. No, I think it's good that you push yourselves against what the best of the other countries have to offer because if you do go up the ladder of uh, Formula Racing, you're going to meet them anyway. Yeah. And you, I, and I'm sure you guys as competitors, you don't want to go against poorer class. You want to go best, uh, against the very best, right? Exactly. I mean, that's how you get better is, is going against people that are better than you. So, so yeah, definitely, definitely really cool. Here are the highlights then of the Formula 4 America's Race 3. And it was Matt Clark out front of the 26 for the whole race, but under pressure massively from the championship leader, Noel Leon, who was looking for his third victory. That was the closest he came. Rodriguez behind him, big accident, but Nilla 
involved. So too Haffer. Jason Alder had some sort of tire issue, we think, on the front left. And that put him out. Damage to Haffer's car. But he did get back out. And Matt Clark soaked up the pressure. The Canadian taking his first victory in F4 Americas here at Mid-Ohio. And my thanks to my two co-commentators for today. Great job, gentlemen, as we look at the uh, results. Matt Clark with the win for Ganella Racing. Noel Leone in D-Force Racing. Rodrigo Gutierrez in third place for DC Autosport. Bijoy Garg in fourth. Chase Gardner fifth. Matt Christiansen sixth. Arsenal seventh. Chris Tadulu in eighth. That's a good result for him to come good all the way up to eighth position. Victor Anderson ninth. And Seth Foley in tenth position. Final thoughts, boys. What are your hopes for today's race, the last one? Where, can you get another win? Yeah, that's the goal. Um, <laughs> you know, we'll see. We're starting second today, so it's, we're going to have to work for it a little bit more. But, yeah, I think we, we should have something. And Jordan, what would put a smile on your face? Well, we're going to be starting 11th, so making our way up through the field, potentially fighting for a podium position is always the goal. But, you know, at this point, for us starting from P11, I think it's going to be managing the gap of the points, trying to just stay in front of our competitors. We know, I know Kiffin and Carr are very far ahead in points, so it's just going to be limiting the damage between them two. Well, best of luck to both of you. Thanks for coming in, and thanks for spending some time with us here in the commentary booth. Let's enjoy the celebrations with Mac and Dad Mac, Daddy Mac, Mac Daddy, to use the right expression. But that was a Mac Daddy performance, to be fair, because... He really did the business to Matt Clark there because that was a lot of pressure throughout that race. And I can, you can see from the emotions as he gets the hugs from everybody in the team by the looks of things. And a first win for Canella, really, really impressive. And in a moment, John Fiffin will be down there to, I'm sure, have a word with our winner. He's more interested in thanking everybody right now, quite rightly. John Fippen will have a quick word. The helmet will come off. And well done to the Honda-powered Matt Clark of Canada. And off comes the balaclava. And that means we can get a look at him and that smile that I'm sure he has. Let's head down now to John Fippen to talk to our winner. Matt Clark, your second win on the weekend. It's got to feel good. A whole lot of pressure from behind. But you made up a lot of ground on that first start. Good job. Thank you. I mean, that was just a crazy race. Uh, fight with Noel and, uh, and Rodrigo the entire time and really difficult with the multiple restarts, but in the end we managed to pull away and get it done. Anybody you'd like to thank? Of course, the team for the Rocket Fast Car, all my partners back home, my dad who's here, and everyone who supports me. Congratulations. Matt Clark, your winner. Jonathan, a great one.